welcome back my wonderful team of students my name is prachi and in today's session we would work on preparation physical properties and chemical properties of acids so that means we would finish acids today i would like you to stay tuned for the session and make sure that you are making notes and you are following along whatever instructions i'm asking you to follow for any questions drop a text in the comment section let's get started with the video okay students let's get started with the second part of acid bases and salts and we are going to start with the preparation of acids so let's look at the first method the first method is by synthesis what does it tell us it tells us binary acids can be prepared by this method what are binary acids binary acids are the ones which are made up of two elements so made up of two elements let's look at the examples so hydrogen plus chlorine will give me hcl hydrogen plus bromine will give me hbr h2 plus s will give me h2s now you guys will tell me what is the smell of h2s h2s is hydrogen sulfide do leave a comment in the comment section and tell me the smell of this gas moving on to the second part or the second method that we follow that is by the action of water on non metallic or acidic oxides or acidic anhydrides we have the examples like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide phosphorus pentoxide so we have certain examples here let's look at certain some background this is background what are metallic oxides okay metallic oxides are like for example na2o cao that is calcium oxide sodium oxide metallic oxides are basic in nature and na2o cao can be called basic anhydrides what does that even mean why do we call them basic anhydrides that is because if we mix water in a metallic oxide it will give out a base that means na2o plus water will give me naoh cao plus water will give me caoh hold twice so metallic oxides are basic in nature these metallic oxides are also known as basic anhydrides because on mixing water in it they give out a base similarly when i talk about non metallic oxides non metallic oxides are acidic in nature co2 so2 these are known as acidic and hydrides that means if we mix co2 in water it will give me an acid let's look at that co2 plus water will give me h2co3 what is that that is carbonic acid so i hope you understand what are non metallic oxides so when we read again this method is by the action of water on non metallic oxides or acidic anhydrides that means take a metallic oxide and mix water in it and you end up getting an acid let's look at the preparation reactions so carbon dioxide plus water will give me h2co3 that is carbonic acid so2 plus h2o will give me h2so3 SO3 plus H2O will give me H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid phosphorus pentoxide P2O5 plus H2O will give me H3PO4 what is that that is sulfurous acid N2O5 plus H2O will give me nitric acid what is that that is HNO3 nitric acid this is what phosphorus acid is phosphoric acid similarly now 
if i what kind of question you can get in exam from this what is the acid anhydride of sulfurous acid which one was sulfurous acid this one is sulfurous acid this is sulfuric acid so which what is the acid anhydride of sulfurous acid that is so2 so you write that in the answer so2 is the acid anhydride of sulfurous acid similarly you can get a question what is the acid anhydride of sulfuric acid so you say so3 what is the acid anhydride of um phosphoric acid that is phosphorus pentoxide p2o5 so you have to answer it accordingly now no2 is called a double or mixed acid anhydride why is that that is because it reacts with water to give you nitrous acid and nitric acid both of them so let's look at the equation of that so i have no2 plus water it gives me hno3 plus hno2 so it gives me nitric acid as well as it gives me nitrous acid both of them therefore called double or mixed acid anhydride okay let's move on to the third type of preparation that is by the oxidation of non metals now we oxidize non metals using concentrated nitric acid why do we use nitric acid that is because nitric acid is a good oxidizing agent let's look at the equations i have sulfur plus hno3 which will give me h2so4 plus water plus no2 the second equation phosphorus p plus hno3 will give me h3po4 plus water plus no2 let's balance these equations now i have not balanced any of the equations so far i always ask you to balance them and if you face any doubts i ask you to drop a text in the comment section but these ones let me balance them with you so sulfur plus 6 hno3 gives you 6 no2 and 2 of water easy balancing phosphorus plus 5 hno3 will give you 5 no2 if you would like you can keep you can learn this uh, balancing for the exam it becomes easy and saves a lot of time so what happens in this case is you get a reddish brown gas reddish brown gas which gas is that that is your no2 so you have to remember this characteristic of no2 it is a reddish brown gas which we get when we use nitric acid to oxidize sulfur and phosphorus that is your non metals okay moving on to the fourth type of preparation that is by displacement so normal salts of more volatile acid are displaced by less or non volatile acids what does that mean this means that salt plus less volatile acid will give me more volatile acid let's look at the equation nacl plus h2so4 will this is less than 200 degree celsius this is more than 200 degree celsius this will give me nahso4 plus hcl so you are getting one salt plus a more volatile acid so nacl plus h2so4 will give you nahso4 plus hcl the same equation is also used as the lab preparation for hcl when you do hydrogen chloride chapter you will find this equation there now nacl plus h2so4 can also react at above 200 degree celsius what do we get then we get na2so4 plus hcl very easy moving on nano3 now this can also react at below 200 degree celsius and above 200 degree celsius so let's look at the products you get nahso4 plus hno3 and in this case you get na2 
SO4 plus HNO3. So this is when you prepare by displacement. If you would like, you can take a note. Otherwise, I have all the notes in the description section mentioned. Download them and learn from that. So by displacement, we have normal salts of more volatile acid, which will easily displace a less volatile acid. So you have the examples here, NaCl plus H2SO4 giving NaHSO4 plus HCl. And similarly for NaNO3 also. So that was all for preparation of acids. Let's move on to the physical property. So the first thing that we have is taste. So taste, I think you would have done it so many times. Acids are sour in taste. Most mineral acids are sour in taste. Now, acids like sulfuric acid, acids like nitric acid, these should not be tasted because they are extremely corrosive. For, for our skin and they may damage our skin instead of like getting the actual taste you may end up burning yourself or uh, making a prob big damage to your skin. So acids like H2SO4 or um, nitric acid should not be tasted. Moving on to the physical state. Now in physical state these are all the acids that you have you should know majority of them if not all. So from boric acid till phosphoric acid, all of these are solid acids in room temperature. So they are solids, solid acids. Other than these, all of these are liquid acids. So they are all liquid at room temperature. One thing that you have to understand about this in within liquids that from acetic acid to sulfurous acid, all of these are volatile acids. And H2SO4 is a non-volatile acid. Okay, now what do we mean by volatile acids? Volatile acids mean that they can easily vaporize at room temperature. So if you're using these acids in any preparation reactions and if you have an open container, there's a chance that you would lose a lot of portion of the acid because they are volatile and they will easily vaporize into the atmosphere. Either they will vaporize at room temperature or they can sometimes vaporize when you give them some heat. And of course, when you're doing any preparation reaction, you would have some heat. So these are volatile acids. Sulfuric acid is a non-volatile acid, remember that. Now, effects on skin. All strong mineral acids have corrosive action on the skin and can cause major burns. Now, let's look at these three important ones. Concentrated H2SO4 stains the skin black. Concentrated HNO3 makes the skin yellow. And concentrated HCl makes the skin amber in color. Now, each of these we will do again in future when we are doing the details of each of them as a chapter. So in that part, they, we will discuss as to why this particular acid reacts from the skin and changes the color to these specific colors. For now, let's look at one example. Nitric acid, when it drops on the skin, it reacts with the protein which is present on the skin. And when it reacts with the protein, it forms a specific acid which is xanthrotropic acid. So this acid is yellow in color. That is the reason this acid is deposited on the skin because the protein is reacted with nitric acid, hence the yellow formation on the skin. Okay, moving on to action on indicators you would have done this a million times. So the change on lithmus would be what? It would be from red, from blue to red for acidic medium, then from red to blue for a basic medium, methyl orange would turn from orange to pink in an acidic medium and it will turn from orange to yellow in a basic medium. Phenolphthalein will be colorless 
in acidic medium and in a basic medium it will turn pink red cabbage extract natural indicators red cabbage extract turmeric now let's look at the changes red cabbage extract will remain red in an acidic medium whereas it will be greenish in a basic medium turmeric will show no change in acidic medium whereas in a basic medium it will turn reddish brown if we move on we have olfactory indicators what are olfactory indicators these are the indicators which show some change in the smell so the examples that we have is vanilla extract onion extract and clove oil so when we have a acidic medium they would smell as is but in a basic medium their smell vanishes so there that means no distinguishing distinguishing smell in a basic medium so in basic medium smell cannot be identified so moving on to chemical properties what do we have as the first one so acids react with active metals so what we have we have dilute hcl and dilute h2so4 which is reacting with certain metals so let's look at the reactions i have zn plus hcl which will give me zncl2 plus h2 na plus h2so4 will give me na2so4 plus h2 mg will give me mgcl2 plus h2 copper so copper is below in the reactivity series um, compared to hydrogen so it will not show any reaction so no reaction now one thing to understand is that we do not use hno3 for this reaction because in this reaction as we are getting hydrogen nitric acid is a very good oxidizing agent so as soon as hydrogen would be released your nitric acid will oxidize hydrogen to give you a water molecule so the purpose of the reaction is destroyed because you're not getting hydrogen if you if you're preparing hydrogen so that so it defeats the purpose of the reaction therefore you can take a note of this nitric acid has a strong oxidizing agent therefore as soon as hydrogen is released it oxidizes it to make water nitric acid can only react with manganese and magnesium to produce hydrogen gas that too only if it is very very dilute how dilute it should just be 1% of acid 1% of acid that is how dilute it needs to be let's look at these reactions so mg so you have mn plus hno3 what it will give me mn no3 whole twice and for this case i'll get mg no3 whole twice plus hydrogen gas so that is magnesium nitrate and your manganese nitrate that is what you will get okay moving on to reaction with bases or basic oxides we did understood what was basic oxide when we were understanding the uh, preparation of acids so you can go back and review that again if you were confused otherwise leave a comment and i can cover that again hcl plus naoh would give you nacl plus h2o h2so4 plus cuo will give you cuso4 plus h2o moving on to reaction with sulfides what are sulfides that is s so let's quickly take a look at a few things so if you have sulfate that is so4 if you have sulfides that we just did so3 sulfides so3 and if you have sulfides des that is just s so zn s 
plus HCl will give you ZnCl plus H2S. H2S is hydrogen sulfide gas which is a smell of rotten egg. So rotten egg smell. FES plus HCl gives us FeCl2 plus H2S. Moving ahead, moving ahead, this is your homework, ZNS, this is your homework. So you have to uh, do the same reaction that is zinc and iron, zinc and iron with H2SO4. I did it with HCl, you try that with H2SO4. And this is home. Even if you don't know it, just mention that and I'll help you along. So let's look at the reactions then. So PbNO3 whole twice plus HCl will give me PbCl2 plus HNO3 and in this case I'll get PbSO4 plus HNO3. So what have we studied so far? We have studied that your uh, nitrates do not react with dilute HCl or dilute H2SO4 except lead nitrate. Okay, so this is the reaction of lead nitrate with dilute HCl and dilute H2SO4. Now, reaction of concentrated H2SO4 with potassium nitrate. When we talk about concentrated H2SO4, it can react either above or below 200 degrees Celsius. So let's look at that. So when we have below 200 degrees Celsius, what will we get? We'll get KHSO4 plus HCl. We'll get KHSO4 plus HNO3 and for KNO3 plus H2SO4 above 200 degrees Celsius, we'll get K2SO4 plus HNO3. So I hope this much is clear. Moving on to the note that I just mentioned. Nitrates do not generally react with dilute acids except lead nitrate. And that is why we study two types of reactions with nitrates. One is with concentrated and one is with dilute acids. I hope this makes sense to you so far. Alright, so my dear students, this is where we end today's session. In this session, we have covered preparation, physical and chemical properties of acids. Extremely, extremely important portion of the chapter. Make sure you go through the entire session thoroughly. Make notes. I have given some homework questions in between. Make sure you try that out and mention your answers in the comments section. In one of the videos coming up, we will discuss some important questions which can come from the portion that we just covered. I hope the entire session made sense to you. If any part is something you did not understand, please let me know about that too. I would be happy to cover that again and uh, address your doubts on the same. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I will. Uh, catch up in the next session and in the next session we will start with the understanding of bases. So stick around and let's complete acid bases and salts together. Thank you so much.